sliced in a jean and the Use pig crisper or something yeah i'm mean, like i think it they did it like a, with a rat gene or something like that so that they can produce their own body heat and it like they're leaner happier pigs that so, take so, less resources to uh -huh. create oh so you're talking okay pigs are warm-bodied animals so they can generate their own heat what you're getting at is that they're better at retaining they can't their regulate body heat. their own heat yeah for they're whatever whatever is going on listen okay. I Four weeks ago, I'm just saying that genetically modifying animals to be better is not this like secret thing that has well, to happen in a lab. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's something also, we've been doing for a long yeah, time. Yeah, a long, long time. But, but yeah. now that we have the tools that we have, it's a literal Pandora's box because you can say, "Hey, look, the pigs are leaner, so they're healthier for you to eat." And by the way, it turns out we accidentally eradicated their natural immunity to X. Yeah, and yeah. all pigs are white out when because they all ate raspberries or something you yeah know? I, I mean know, fair. I, know, I know it's like uh, well and that's why they don't immediately you know introduce this new genetic thing into the general population i think they let it sort of you know for a couple life cycles a yeah. yeah that's probably not probably not a bad idea but, but also really i don't up pigs. but also i don't necessarily think that's again it's like not this super nefarious weird no oh, like x file thing happening no but but again uh, you know when, when you're doing research you got to go down all kinds of avenues and paths and True. some some of them might be a little weirder than others. True, you know? true. Um, and, but, you know, but also, I, I don't know if they're actually doing this. You think it would be easier just to develop a vaccine for this stuff rather than trying to, you know, engineer a cow that, for example, that can't catch it. Well, the hard part with engineering a vaccine, though, is that the disease tends to be a moving target. Yeah, and, that, that is a And there are, yeah. there are certain parts of a disease that are easier to target yeah. than others. So there's there's really specific things, but those things change. It's kind of like, you know, when they do the vaccines for the flu each year, they're hoping to go for some particular aspect of it. They're guessing at what it's going to be present that year, but it changes from year to year because all oh, yeah. those kind of things move, and there's some more base items of a virus or things or bacteria that you can attack, but they're much harder to target specifically. That's why things like vaccines, sometimes it's just a money-making scheme for co companies because every year they have to make a new one, which yeah. is when you get the conspiracy of they're doing it on purpose. They could totally cure it if they wanted to, but why would they throw away all that free money? Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> wow, that was a tangent. But just yeah, that was. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was, was good. It was, it was very helpful. But. That's a good point. Just like cancer, they could totally cure cancer, but you know they'd rather like have people die. <laughs> oh no! I mean, they want to make money. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, where where was I though? The uh, but and you know, support for this comes from, of course, uh, horror stories about you know, like you know, the, the Montauk monster, for example. But that's about it as far as evidence goes for this. Uh, can, can we talk about what the Montauk monster was? Well, there are there are people. Um, there are certain people out there, it, and they're kind of out there, conspiracy theory types, who think that it was a raccoon. It yeah. was a trash panda. Yeah, a trash panda. That's what a raccoon <laughs> is. It's a trash panda. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. It, it, and when you look at it, it does kind of look like one. It's, uh, I think it was missing its jaw, like its upper jaw. No, it's the the front of its nose was all worn yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, it's in, and of course its hair was gone. But apparently, after you're immersed in, in seawater for a certain amount of time, your hair does kind of tend to fall out. If you do Weird. some looking around, you can find photos of raccoons that have been submerged in that area. And they look almost identical, except they still have the ring tail. The uh -huh. hair was still on their tail, so it seems pretty clear that it's it's a raccoon. Uh, well, okay. And then. based on the scale, using that fly, probably the right size. Yeah. But uh, raccoons are terrible, terrible little creatures, and so I'm not uh, I'm not <laughs> upset the fact that they're drowning in the oh, ocean. Oh, they're cute. They are cute. They're cute. Until I encounter them in real life. Yeah. And then they're awful. When you find them in your neighborhood, they're never cute and cuddly. No, they're kind of ornery, yeah. They're, they're vicious they're, little monsters. They are kind of nasty, yeah. I mean, they are cute, I have to, I have to say. Um, I like looking at pictures of them. Yeah, no. When they're cute, not the, like, gross ones. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they are actually a little, a little sweeter natured when they're just cubs. You know, it's when yeah. they get older, they get kind of mean. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. like people. Yeah. And but, bears. Yeah. Really everything. Yeah. Not so, fish. Fish? Fish are never cute. 
That's, That's true. true. Yeah. yeah they I thought you meant way. they don't get mean. <laughs> no, like they definitely do. They do. Yeah, they, they yeah. attack worms and, and fishing yeah. lures and all kinds of stuff. They're nasty. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, so so what, what do we got? We, so the evidence. The Montauk Monster and some of the other stuff that's washed up on shore that's presented as evidence doesn't look that conclusive to me because, like I say, the monster was probably a raccoon. In fact, almost certainly a raccoon. Uh, the other stuff that was unrecognizable, well, that's what happens when you're in the water for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I told you my story again about my friends who came across a body in the Willamette River and just left because they didn't think it was a body. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah they just left. Yeah, and so uh, it's definitely... Or at least happened. that's what they told you. Yeah, really. They, they probably left the body there, actually. Mm-hmm. That's what they meant when they said left. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and as for that dude that washed up on the beach uh, in 2010, that probably was a mob head, I'm thinking. I don't think so. You don't think so? Why not? No, I, they don't usually, like, experiment on, on brains or anything like that. They would just, like, you know, baseball bat to the knees. <laughs> Whack them. Yeah, yeah, stick their feet in concrete and just dump them. Yeah, dump them, yeah. Okay. Well, okay, so not a mob. I'm pretty head. sure no. they drilled in the back of his head with a gun. Yeah, that could I'm be also sure. possible. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's too. Yeah, but, but uh, so okay, maybe a mob head, or maybe a Devin, like Devin says, not a mob head. But uh, but the body did have those weird elongated fingers. But then again, on the other hand, there is this thing called Marfan syndrome. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So the body, it, it comes with a little bit of deformation in, in the body, including deformed hands with really weirdly long, long fingers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it might have just been some guy with Marfan's. Uh, also, I did, I didn't ever like see pictures or anything like that. No, I didn't either. Of it, so like that's just it's like hearsay to me. Yeah. You know, like oh, he had long fingers. Like okay. Yeah. Well, no, it's entirely possible. Like I said, that it was just a. It could have been some sort of genetic anomaly. I mean, yeah. or he may Actually, have been a guy with just long fingers. That yeah. could be it too. I mean, uh, but or or Marfan's, like I said, or it's some possible, other genetic yeah. anomaly. I mean, yeah. Actually, genetic anomalies occur naturally. It, a lot it, to a lot of people. To a lot of people, yeah. and so not necessarily because there was some sort of you know Frankenstein experiment going on. Man, but and the other problem I have with this theory too, especially when it comes to the body being evidence, is the body was found on the beach of Plum Island. Escaping from Plum Island. Yeah, and so it's like, uh, if, so if it was, this was the fruit of one of their hideous experiments, then you got to ask why they turned the body over to the local police. Yeah. Why would they do that? They wouldn't. Same with the 1959 footage. I mean, where did this come from? It was because, again, the, 1959, the 1959 footage is on YouTube. They say that it was found on Plum Island. And so you got to ask, well, okay, so if it was found on Plum Island, these guys go out and say, oh, one of our critters got away again. Good thing we got it before he got off the island. Mm-hmm. Why would they take film of them? I mean, they know it's theirs. Why not just, like, you know, bag them up and haul them back to the incinerator? But we believe the, the 1959 lab. thing is real? No. I had no idea. You know, it doesn't... I was going to say, because I feel like the video is, like, not... If, if you... Okay, so if anybody has ever used any kind of film animation software, there are preset filters to age things, to give it the lines and uh-huh. the spots. And yeah. if you play that thing slow and you watch a spot, you know, you can pick like just pick a quadrant. You'll yeah. start to see the same set of lines appearing over and over. There's no randomness to it. Which, if it was real old scratched up film, that would be random. It yeah. would be completely random. Yeah. So that is that is somebody's fun thing that they made and antiqued with some kind of uh, I don't know iMovie filter or something. With mm. probably like a dummy from Spirit. Halloween. That's like, because yeah. you know what it really looks like to me is like a werewolf decoration. Yeah. yeah. That you Could would be. get like at a Halloween store, you know. Maybe. It def- I mean, it, to me, it looks totally like a dog body except for the front legs. Right. Which yeah. is what werewolf things look like often. Ooh, werewolf costumes. Where they're like, you know, the she- arms of a human going woo, but like everything else is the dog. Mm-hmm. I, wish like every, I really wish everybody could have seen you pantomiming it was that. Cute. It was quite funny. <laughs> it was super cute. Um, As we get our TV show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think that's kind of what it looks like to me is like somebody took their like werewolf dummy out, and, like filmed it, and then like put a filter on it and was like, it's from 19... 19- Especially yeah. since it was released after 
this like other weird Montauk that you know it's mm -hmm. kind of to me yeah. that just seems yeah, like a, it was actually a fake put internet on, point grab. Yeah, it was put on YouTube in I think 2016. Yeah. Well, and so, the problem yeah. is, is that you know what? If it was a real, if, if it was real, and it was really somebody out there with a camera checking out this weird thing they had come across, mm -hmm. they just circled it. Instead, this they, camera yeah, stays in one. They don't walk around it. Yeah, yeah, this stays in one place and floats back and forth, almost as if it's someone holding out a cell phone camera and just kind of shifting back and forth, knowing that like the Possible. zipper goes up the back of the costume. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, also I gotta say that uh, you know, next time you want to put something like that out there, don't say you found it on the beach on Plum Island. Say yeah, you found it. Found say it you found it on the beach, like you know, just across the shore from Plum Island on Long Island. Right. Okay. Hello. Well, okay. So that. Uh, All right. So we kind of butchered that thing. Yeah. I got. I got to say, I. I don't think. I don't give a lot of credence to this whole genetic experimentation kind of thing going on on the island. There's just no, like I said, I, I, I you know, as far as the human body, it was a mob hit. You know, somebody <laughs> got shot in the head. No. You know? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay, in deference to Devin, it was an accident. Yeah. Okay. Uh, With okay. a gun. Okay, so... Five times. Yeah, so no uh, no hideous genetic experiments, but maybe they're creating some sort of fast-breeding ticks and mosquitoes, or maybe just not trying to breed the ticks and mosquitoes, but just trying to come up with a breed of tick that would take various diseases without getting infected and dying themselves. That's the whole thing about those. you got to make sure the bug itself is just going to carry it and not die from the disease itself. Yeah. And so maybe they were messing with that stuff. Some of those ticks or bugs got out, and next thing you know, we got Lyme disease, West Nile disease, etc. So maybe it didn't actually originate there, but it just got a, another possibility is it just got a foothold in the population because there were more ticks to spread it around. All There's right, so let's, let's run those through this because there's, there's the some island. serious flaws in this. Well, there are. There yeah. Are. What? <laughs> that sounds wrong. Uh, and there is actually a theory that's out there, and you know, and on apparently reputable pages, that there we have a bigger tick problem today in the U.S. because of government experiments in the 1950s and 60s. In other words, they were doing all this experimenting, they were a little careless, and now we've got more ticks in the U.S., and they're, guess what, unfortunately, faster breeding ticks. And the government, and this is not I, entirely out of speculation, because the government did do research on all this stuff. They because they Using did, it as a weapon. Yeah, Using yeah. ticks as a weapon. Yeah, and obviously creating a faster breeding tick, for example, does make sense if you want to drop a bunch of ticks behind enemy lines, and you, you know, the faster they breed, the, the better it is as a weapon. You just want to make damn sure they don't get out of your lab and into your own country. Yeah. You're kind of screwing By, like, maybe in. putting your lab on an island. Yeah, that's one way to do so it. So it's harder for them to get places. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, you know, once you've created these fast-breeding ticks, you know, you infect them with whatever diseases you want to spread, and there you go. Again, it's not too far out there. Actually, uh, quite a few governments have done research along these lines. And, like we talked about earlier, if you can destroy the enemy's food supply, okay, great idea. Do it. More time anyway. Especially if, like, you can do it with ticks or something that might also, like, get on humans and make them miserable. Like, if you've got your oh, troops yeah. are also infected with ticks or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. that, extra miserable. Not only are you yeah. not eating well, but also you're somehow infested with this thing. And, ugh. I, yeah, I don't I've like never had either. a tick, but, you know, I, I kind of suspect I wouldn't like it if I got Yeah, I tick. don't think so. Yeah, I know a few people that had ticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got rid of them. Yeah. I, at least I hope they did. But apparently, uh, from everything, I, all my research indicates is uh, the research that was done on ticks and infecting these bugs and stuff like that was all done at Fort Detrick, Maryland. So yeah. not Plum Island? Apparently not. I, I, I found no evidence that it was done on Plum Island. That's uh, just what they want you to think. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a good point, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but Fort Detrick is kind of the place. It's kind of the place. It's a much bigger place than Plum Island. A lot more going on there. I mean, a lot of people working there and working on stuff like this, you know, biowarfare kind of stuff. And, it's, it, of course, it, you know, Fort Detrick, it's possible some ticks escaped. I think maybe the internet certainly seems to have a lot of fleas and ticks on it. You know what I'm yeah. yeah. So maybe that's where they all came from. And I, Now, if you think about it, if they were, it's possible that maybe some ticks got into the facility on the backs of some cattle. Oh, coming on to Plum Island? Yeah, they came on to the island. Somehow they came on. I don't, I don't know how thoroughly they were checked for that kind of on the island, and, and some lab tech goes by. They hop onto the lab tech, hop off in the lab into a petri dish, swim around a little bit, get infected with this, that, like Lyme disease or whatever. Hop onto another human, 
and then out the door. And make it through and the two decontamination showers and change of clothes. Well, that would be the tricky part, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it's possible. But again, again, you know, I don't know how. Uh, again, Lyme disease, I think, um, as I think they think it's been around since about the mid '70s. So oh, back when they were all little, little longer than that. Yeah, probably. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of diseases. Like HIV is one of those ones where they. They were pretty sure it came. It was actually here in America at a certain point, like in the early 80s, late 70s. And now they're suddenly realizing, oh, wait, we've identified some cases that were earlier than that. So apparently it was around. So, it's, yeah. I mean, we just get better at diagnosing things. I, you know, like yeah. we used to be like, oh, it's you have hysteria. Yeah. Ma'am. You have wasting disease. You know, or or whatever. We got to let all your blood out of your body because it's infected. Like that, yeah. none of those were things. Yeah. But we thought them for a long time. And now it's like we have this higher instance of, you know, anxiety. But like, oh, maybe we just got good at saying it's anxiety, not hysteria. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you I know, mean, Lyme disease has been around for a long time, though. I mean, yeah. what is it? The it's two to three hundred thousand cases of it are identified a, or diagnosed a year. More than two hundred thousand cases in the U.S. per year. Okay, yeah. now that's because we have a very specific set of criteria to identify it with, and very good tests to run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to, but to it, pick it's it actually, out. it actually is hard to identify. It is, it, it is and yeah. it's and it's got some very distinct things like the the ring around. The tick bite is a giant indicator, the bullseye around uh-huh, the bite. Yeah. But there is there's stuff out there from historical writings from the late 17 and the mid 1800s of people coming to the east coast of the United States and being like, dude, this place is lousy with ticks. They are literally hanging off of the trees to drop on you, and everybody's getting bit. And then there, it's doctors who are treating people, reporting symptoms that are pretty much without having, you know, the to the degree that we can diagnose things, but it's all visual diagnosis, it's totally, totally Lyme disease. The yeah. first diagnosed case was 1764 in Scotland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. that's so, crazy. <laughs> Way longer ago than we yeah, thought. Well, you know? Lyme disease is not yeah. a new thing. That's what, that's yeah. what just so, I roll my eyes at this because... And it's been around for a long, long time. Well, I mean, but but the theory is, well, they, they didn't necessarily create the disease from scratch itself, but that they caused the outbreak in Lyme, Connecticut, mm. and it by by infecting ticks, deliberately infecting ticks, and then just letting them escape. Sure, so, maybe. Again, I, I, I don't find that totally persuasive because I get, I don't, my, one of the problems I have with this theory is that, well, maybe they were that careless. They let a few ticks go, but... The other thing is, is as a biowarfare agent, Lyme disease is just not what the it's one that I would pick. Bad. No, it kind yeah. of sucks as a biowarfare agent. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's going to infect your soldiers, and then, like, what, a couple of years down the line, they're going to get aches and pains in their joints and, you know, and stuff like that. Very, and, very few people have immediate and debilitating reactions exactly. when they contract Lyme disease. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, I mean, by the time that, by the time it finally kicks in and affects the enemy soldiers, well, maybe the war's already over. Right? Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's a, it's yeah, a it's, crappy it, it would be warfare. more effective to investigate how to, you know, apply athlete's foot to your mm-hmm. enemy yeah. because that's going to take hold faster than Lyme Yeah, that one was easy. You just, like, make them build trenches and then have it rain a lot. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Uh, they, they figured that one out a long time ago. Yeah, but yeah. that was totally unintentional. It was, yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, so, so much for Lyme disease, I guess. Okay, what yeah. do we got next? I just think that, yeah, okay. Well, okay, so uh, they, they didn't originate Lyme disease, the Lyme disease outbreak. Uh, maybe they're still pursuing biowarfare, though, because, I mean, even though we've officially given up on biological weapons, there is such a thing as keeping our options open, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I, so our official policy today is that we will deter a biological attack with a nuclear response, <laughs> which is great. But, well, you know, what if a future commander-in-chief just doesn't quite have the moxie to drop a nuke or two? Uh, or what if an enemy launches a bioattack on our troops, but it's not something you know, like like massive, deadly anthrax, but something like the flu or something like that? Mm-hmm. So uh, to where we, we know that they bioattacked our troops, but they didn't give a, the, something that's totally deadly like anthrax, and that's the problem with the nuclear deterrent, is that, well... It's an it's an on off switch kind of thing. It's an either or. It's like having a it's having a sledgehammer when you're dealing with a mosquito or two. 
And so having some bioweapons laying around for just in case, whether you not have, it, have it treated or not, is not really such a bad idea it adds a deterrent, if nothing else. Again, research is not entirely prohibited by the Biological Weapons Convention of 1972. You can still do some research. Well, so it's not inconceivable that they're looking into this kind of stuff on the island. Again, a covert kind of thing. If it's something you don't really want to advertise, I mean, you can hide it inside another program, which is what people, you know, what the government likes to do. Yeah, I'm also yeah. not convinced that 